Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, today I have some really exciting news regarding the Xbox Series X and the Velocity architecture. Now, I've been waiting for this deep dive for quite some time, and finally, we have it over at Xbox.com. Like usual, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Now, Jason Ronald, the Director of Programming and Management over at the Xbox Series X, he has a good article detailing the improvements that the Velocity architecture does for the SSD that is found inside the Xbox Series X. Now, a lot of gamers are saying that the PlayStation 5 SSD is much faster and they wouldn't be wrong. On paper, it is twice as fast and they also have some decompression on that system as well. They have a Kraken system. But the Xbox Series X also has a capable SSD drive in it and the velocity architecture actually increases the speed. Now, the article starts off with their design of the Xbox Series X. He goes on to say that they inspired to build the most powerful console ever, powered by the next generation innovations and delivering a consistent and sustained performance never before seen in console with no compromises. To achieve this goal, we knew we had to analyze each component of the system to push beyond the limitations of the traditional console performance and design. It was critical the design of the Xbox Series X to ensure we had a superior balance of power, speed, and performance while ensuring no component would constrain the creative ambition of the world's best creators, empowering them to deliver truly transformative next generation gaming experiences not possible in prior console generations. Generations. At the heart of the Xbox Series X, we have a custom processor leveraging the latest RDNA 2 and Zen 2 architectures from our partners at AMD to deliver the best in class next generation processor with more than 12 teraflops of GPU power and more than four times of the CPU processing power found in the Xbox One X. The Xbox Series X includes the highest memory bandwidth of any next generation console with 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory, including 10 gigabytes of GPU optimized memory at 560 gigabytes per second. They really did build a beast of a console. I have to say, the Xbox Series X, if this console comes in at $500, and I, I just don't know how they're, they can price it at $500, but this is what all the reports say, you know, uh, all of my colleagues say that it's going to be $500. That is an amazing feat for what the Xbox Series X is capable of doing. Now, the PlayStation 5 is no slouch either. We're hearing that that system's gonna be around $399. Now, the extra $100, I do believe it's worth it for the Xbox Series X, especially if you play a lot of multi-plat games. They're gonna look and they're gonna run better on the Xbox Series X. But a lot of gamers always concentrate on the SSD drive that is found in the PlayStation 5 because it is faster than the one found in the Xbox Series X. Now, somewhere along the lines, the uh, the, the information, it, it got lost on what the SSD actually does for the next generation consoles. It helps with the load times. It helps with the streaming in of assets. It, it doesn't change the graphics, but for some reason, gamers feel that the SSD inside the PlayStation 5 will improve the graphics and will improve the frame rate on the PlayStation 5, and that's just not the case. Now, Microsoft, they chose to go with a slower SSD, and I guess that was to cut the cost down, but they are the number one software company in the world, and their velocity architecture really increases the throughput on the Xbox Series X. It's really impressive. So let's get into the components that make up the Xbox Velocity architecture. Now this consists of a custom NVMe SSD, hardware accelerated decompression blocks, a brand new direct storage API layer, and sample feedback. Now the Xbox Series X has a one terabyte NVMe SSD, delivering 2.4 gigabytes of raw IO throughput, more than 40 times the throughput of the Xbox One. Now Microsoft wanted to offer the developers some type of consistency, so the speeds, they don't fluctuate on this SSD. They stay at a constant speed to ensure that every single Xbox Series X has this exact speed and developers can base their optimizations on that performance. Now that's going to cut down time which is always good for the developers and they're also ensuring that their expandable storage will also have that same consistent speed. Now they also have hardware accelerated decompression blocks on there. Now this takes away work from the 
CPU, the GPU. This dedicated block, it takes the game packages, it takes the assets, it compresses it to minimize the download times and the amount of storage required for each individual game. Now it supports the industry standard decompressions as well as a brand new proprietary algorithm specifically designed for the texture data named BC Pack. Now we've been hearing about BC Pack for quite some time and they go on to say that if you get a two to one compression ratio on the Xbox Series X, you effectively get 4.8 gigabytes in the IO performance to the title and that's approximately 100 times better than the performance found in the Xbox One. Now due to this hardware block that doesn't need the GPU, doesn't need the CPU to run, so it doesn't take away from the processing power of the system, you're effectively doubling the IO performance on the Xbox Series X and that's an incredible feat and that also narrows the gap found between the PlayStation 5 and the SSD found in the Series X. Now they also have a direct storage API and this basically gives the developers low level access to make sure that they're able to take advantage of the IO latency, they're able to prioritize things, they get queues and basically this low level API ensures that developers are able to take full advantage of the raw performance afforded by the hardware and this results in virtually eliminating load times and making fast travels simply fast. Now this has been a feature that's been touted on the PlayStation 5 due to its SSD and it's great to see that the velocity architecture will also allow the elimination of load times on the Series X. Now the last thing that comprises of the velocity architecture is the sample feedback streaming. Now this is a brand new innovation built on the other advancements of the Xbox velocity architecture and basically game textures are optimized at different levels of detail, resolutions and these are called mipmaps. Now they can be used during rendering based on how close or far away the object is for the player and as objects move closer to the player the resolution texture must increase to provide the crisp detail and visuals that gamers expect. Now the larger mip maps require a significant amount of memory compared to the lower resolution mips that can be used in objects further away in the scene. Developers now must load the entire mip level to the memory even in cases where they may only sample a very small portion of the overall texture. Now through the specialized hardware of the Xbox One X they were able to analyze the texture memory uses by the the GPU and discovered that the GPU often accessed less than one third of the texture data required to be loaded in the memory. A single scene often includes thousands of different textures resulting in a loss of effective memory and IO bandwidth utilization due to the inefficient usage. Now with that insight they were able to create and add new capabilities to the Xbox Series X GPU which enables it to only load the sub portions of the MIP level into the memory and demand it just in time when the GPU requires the data. Now because of this innovation it results in approximately 2.5 times the effective IO throughput and memory usage and beyond the raw hardware capabilities. I have to say that sampler feedback is truly amazing and I'm not really surprised because Microsoft they've always been at the forefront of innovation of bringing out new technologies new programs and I haven't seen this from Microsoft in quite some time but with the Xbox Series X they seem to be rejuvenated and I have to say I'm really impressed with the IO throughput improvements that they were able to achieve now Jason closes the article up saying that through the massive increase in the IO throughput hardware acceleration decompression direct storage and significant increases in efficiency provided by the sample feedback streaming, the Xbox Velocity architecture enables the Xbox Series X to deliver effective performance well beyond the raw hardware specs, providing direct, instant, low-level access to more than a hundred gigabytes of game data stored on the SSD just in time for when the game requires it. These innovations will unlock new gameplay experiences and a level of depth and immersion unlike anything you've previously experienced in gaming. Now, the Xbox Series X the SSD is very capable. It also will change the game design going forward for the next generation, just like the PlayStation 5's SSD is making innovations such as Ratchet and Clank. So the advantages of the Xbox Velocity architecture are apparent. On paper, yes, the PlayStation 5 SSD is faster. In practice, we don't know until we see both of these consoles out this fall, but I do believe overall the PlayStation 5 will have a faster SSD. I think we're gonna see, like I said many times before, that the load times are gonna be maybe three seconds faster. Maybe assets will load in half a second to a second faster, and maybe the draw distance will be slightly further. I don't think many gamers are gonna notice the difference of the SSDs. Both next generation consoles have very fast SSDs, and now with the information that we have on the velocity architecture, we also know that the Xbox Series X is gonna have a 
very fast SSD. It's going to have a very capable system and I just can't wait to see it in action. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about all this information. Do you think in the end that the PlayStation 5 SSD, the extra speed that it has, that it will be noticed in games? Also, what do you think about gamers who think that the SSD in the PlayStation 5 will actually afford it better graphics and frame rates? Let me know in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.